What happened to Slade? Comprised of singer slash guitarist Naughty Holder, guitarist Dave Hill, bassist Jimmy Lee, and drummer Don Powell, the group originally formed in the spring of 1966 under the name The Inbetweens, playing out regularly with a mixture of soul and rock tracks. As The Inbetweens, they gained greater recognition and began to get supporting gigs with acts such as The Hollies, The Yardbirds, Georgie Fame, and Spencer Davis. But besides a lone obscure single, You Better Run, penned by future runaway Svengali Kim Foley, the band never issued any other recordings. Later, back in their hometown of Wolverhampton, the musicians met again and this time Holder agreed to join the group. Jim Lee, whose musical background and strong bass guitar skills were considered an asset, had already been recruited. A local promoter, Roger Allen, spotted the group in 1969 and alerted the head of A&R at Philip Records, Jack Baverstock. By the end of the 60s, the group had changed their name to Ambrose Slade and signed on with the Fontana label. Baverstock also found the group and agent John Gunnell, who had previously worked with the entertainment entrepreneur Robert Stickwood. Soon after, the quartet hooked up with Animal's bass player turned manager Chas Chandler, who had discovered Jimi Hendrix a few years prior, who promptly suggested the group shorten the name to Just Slade and assume a skinhead look with Dr. Martin boots and shaved heads as a gimmick. After several albums featuring few original compositions from the quartet came and went, such as 1969's Beginnings and 1970's Play It Loud, the group began to write their own tunes, grew their hair long, and assumed the look of the then-burgeoning glam movement, joining the same cause championed by such fellow Brits as David Bowie and T-Rex. Chandler moved Slay to Polydor Records, believing a higher-profile label would boost sales. With Chandler managing Slade, he suggested the release of Get Down and Get With It, which became a UK Top 20 hit. The band embraced glam rock, writing songs like Cause I Love You, which hit number one in the UK. Slade's live album succeeds, followed by hits like Take Me Back Home and Mama We're All Crazy Now. Come On Feel the Noise and Squeeze Me Please both top the charts, but a car crash briefly jeopardized the band. Powell's recovery led to the Christmas single Merry Christmas Everybody, which became a hit in the UK and is still being played a lot to this day. Slade experimented with musical styles, releasing successful singles like Every Day and The Banging Man. In late 1974, Slade explored filmmaking with Slade and Flame, portraying the rise and fall of a fictional 60s group. The soundtrack's Far, Far Away reached number two in the UK. Despite critical acclaim, the film's noir vibe confused fans and its theme song How Does It Feel at 15 on the UK charts hinted at a decline. Thanks for the memory, Wham Bam Thank You Ma'am in May 1975 marked their last top 10 hit of the 70s as their popularity declined. In mid-1975, Slade was dissatisfied with their lack of success in America. They moved there permanently, touring extensively and focusing on live performances. They took tons of equipment worth 45,000 pounds. The band, influenced by the U.S., recorded the album Nobody's Fools in New York featuring soul, country, and funk elements. Despite UK chart success with singles In For A Penny and Let's Call It Quits, the album disappointed both in the US and the UK, leading to accusations from UK fans of selling out and neglecting their home base. In mid-1975, Slade moved to the US seeking success but faced disappointment and returned in 1977 to find punk rock dominating the charts. They switched to Barn Records, releasing Gypsy, Roadhog, but BBC, Bandit, and subsequent albums like Whatever Happened to Slade faced commercial challenges. The band endured setbacks, including Holder's Brawl and unsuccessful singles. 
live album Slayed Alive Volume 2 was released, and in 1979, they struggled with singles and released Return to Bass. Internal disputes led to Chandler's departure from being the manager. Slade faced further challenges with Lee forming the Dummies and Holder briefly considered for ACDC. The band's EP Six of the Best failed to chart and by mid-1980, Slade stopped working together. Hill turned to driving couples to weddings in his Rolls Royce, but the venture didn't flourish. Despite challenges, Slade maintained confidence in their songs during this difficult period. In the early 1980s, Slade experienced a resurgence with RCA Records. They released the power ballad My Oh My, which reached number two in the UK and found success in Europe. The album The Amazing Kamikaze Syndrome followed but had limited chart success. The release of the Celtic-flavored rock jig Run Runaway helped boost the album's performance. Slade continued producing and Holder collaborated with Lee on projects like Girl School's cover of T-Rex's 20th Century Boy. In the U.S., Quiet Riot's cover of Come On, Feel the Noise revived interest in Slade, leading to their signing with CBS Records. The singles Run, Runaway, and My Oh My gained traction in the U.S., marking Slade's first and only top 20 hit in the U.S., the album was reworked for North America as Keep Your Hands Off My Power Supply and Achieve Success. Unfortunately, a planned tour with Ozzy Osbourne was cancelled after Lee's health issues, leading to the band's return to the UK and subsequent inactivity. Through the late 80s and early 90s, Slade faced commercial challenges. They released various singles, including All Join Hands and Seven Year Bitch, but struggled to maintain chart success. The album Rogue's Gallery received critical acclaim but fell short commercially, impacting Slade's visibility. A compilation Slade's Greats and the album Knights and Emeralds feature new tracks, yet the band's chart presence dwindled. In 1986, Oki Koki was re-released and a fan convention marked a significant event. Slate experimented with releases like Still the Same and That's What Friends Are For, but these faced limited success. The final studio album, You Boys Make Big Noise, encountered poor promotion and chart performance. Slade returned to Cheapskate Records, releasing You Boys Make Big Noise and Ooh La La in L.A., but both experienced commercial setbacks. Attempts in 1989, including a new album announcement by Holder, didn't materialize, and Merry Christmas Everybody re-releases had limited impact. Hill formed Blessings in Disguise, and Lee pursued solo endeavors. In 1990, Holder and Lee produced a cover of Merry Christmas Everybody by the Metal Gurus, contributing royalties to Childline. In 1991, Slade marked their 25th anniversary with a fan club organized party. Their performance of Johnny B. Good at the event turned out to be their final live appearance. Lee, during that year, produced the unsuccessful single Where Have All the Good Girls Gone for the Crybabies. Polydor Records approached Slade for a compilation album called Wall of Hits, hoping for new material. The single Radio Wall of Sound and the compilation achieved moderate success. However, the second single, Universe, failed to chart, leaving Polydor to withdraw plans for a new album in January 1992. In March, the band recorded a dance-style version of We'll Bring the House Down, but by month end, Holder decided to leave the band after 26 years. Weary of internal conflicts, he explored other career occupations. Lee considered Holder integral to Slade, which made him also effectively retire, and Powell briefly left before joining Hill to form Slade 2 later in the year. Slade 2, formed in 1992 by Hill and Powell, initially faced controversy over using the Slade name. The band released the studio album Keep On Rocking in 1994, but it wasn't successful. 
Various lineup changes occurred with Hill and Powell remaining constants. Slade had brief reunions in 1996 for events related to manager Chandler and a TV show featuring Holder. Compilations like the Genesis of Slade from 1996 and Feel the Noise Greatest Hits from 1997 followed. The band's documentary It's Slade aired on BBC One in 1999. In 2002, Slade 2 became Slade and they re-released the album as Come On Let's Party. The band continued with various releases, remasters, and compilations. Despite a reunion attempt in 2010, ongoing conflicts hindered a Slade comeback. In recent years, members have contributed to interviews in an unauthorized discography book, The Noise. And that's what happened to Slade. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. And give me some facts about the band that I failed to mention. And let me know who I should do next. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.